Bill Blair, our conversation uh, on our special series continues this week. Let's talk about cannabis and the law. Uh, it, it's good to see you uh, again and deal with some of these unanswered questions for Canadians. How satisfied are you that law enforcement in this country is ready to deal with uh, legalization and the new responsibilities that come from that. Actually, I've been really pleased with, with the work that mo many, I'll even say most police services have done in order to get ready. Impaired driving by drugs has been a problem in this country and against the law since 1925. But for decades, the police never had the training or the technology or the authorities that they needed. And so we, we wrote a new piece of legislation, Bill C-46, which has new authorities and new offenses that empowers the police to perhaps for the first time be more effective in detecting, deterring and prosecuting these offenses. We've provided resources to get them trained and, and you know, we've seen a, in the last 18 months, we've seen a 60 percent increase in the number of officers that are now trained as drug recognition experts. They, they need more, they'll get more, right. but there's been a huge improvement in their capacity. And, and as, as well, they've, they've been urging uh, the government of Canada to make available to them access to new technologies, technologies that are in use in other jurisdictions. And so we said yes, the first devices are now available, others will come online. Yeah, I wanna, uh, let's get to those future. devices because there's, as you know, there's some pushback on those devices. That, uh, you know, we saw in, uh, Colorado saw a spike in, in drug impaired driving, and that, that was one of the concerns they Actually, had. Actually, what Colorado saw was an, a spike in, in the t to detect of drug impaired driving. In 2013, they brought in legislation concurrent with the new, new uh, legalization there that empowered the police to do a much better job right, of detecting But they had a it. spike in fatalities on the road and so on with people involving drug impaired driving. Well, I've, I've, so I've, I've spoken and, and received correspondence and assurances from the, the governor of, of Colorado that says that in, in the past two years they've seen a significant reduction okay. in drug impaired driving in their jurisdiction. Well, what, are you, what are you expecting in this country? I'm expecting the, the, the police now, with the training that, that's been provided, with the new authorities that they possess, and with the, the, the access to the technologies that they have long been asking for, they're going to become far more effective in, in detecting and, and deterring and prosecuting this offense. And, and, and also for the first time, Peter, you know, there's been lots of recent uh, research done that indicates that Canadians, particularly young Canadians, had gross misconceptions about the risks of, of driving while high. And so through public education programming and a lot of messaging that's gone out there, we are, I think, getting the message across that this is risky. Not only is it risky to your safety, but you now will, the police have the right. ability to detect, and, and there are real consequences for this. And, and what, what has been a problem for decades, I think is finally, we're now in a position that we can begin to get this under control. As legalization takes hold here, 900 police officers are trained to administer the preliminary tests required to de detect drug impaired drivers. Uh, Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police says 2,000 are required to do the job effectively. Uh, isn't that a road safety gap? Yeah, well, I'll tell you where the gap began in 2008. The Bill C-2 in 2008 authorized the use of drug recognition experts, but there was no resources to train them. And as a consequence, this eight years later, they had only managed to train 500 people. And so we've managed to have a 60% increase in that in the last 18 months because we actually put the resources into their training. And, and so there is a need for more of these officers, but for eight years, they, they were grossly under-resourced in this area, and we're, we're fixing that. And so their capacity has increased very substantially. And, you know, I've, I've been speaking to a number of different municipalities, even right here in Ottawa. You know, the, the Ottawa police, is, as indicated, they've, they've got now 45 drug recognition experts trained. And, and since 2012, they have been insisting that all of their people, are, when, they, when they join, are trained to standard, in standardized right. field sobriety right. testing. Police services have known this is coming. They've, they've been asking for the tools and the authorities and the resources to do the job. We've, we've provided it. I have great confidence in them that they'll get the job okay. done. So, 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 as we, so for the people who understand the process, first, you know, there's a, if you're pulled over, there's, a, there's an oral roadside swab, and then if that's positive, there's a blood test to determine the precise level of impairment, as I, as I understand the process. Well, no, no as a matter of okay. fact, that, that's not it. The police officers will make observations of the person's driving. Uh, first of all, and which may give them an indication the person's impaired. They can then conduct what they call a standardized field sobriety test. Right. Which Touch you can do nose, for, for people who consumed alcohol. Well, they don't through. know what, yeah. the basis of yeah. their impairment. If they believe or suspect that it, 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 it could be cannabis or other drugs, they, they will, if they've got access to the device, administer uh, the, the oral fluids test kit, which will tell them the, the presence of the drug. They then can order the individual, based on reasonable probable grounds, to submit to the test of a drug recognition expert. Or they can also go in and, and make a demand for blood and mm -hmm. within a two-hour window obtain a blood sample. So there's a lot of different things they can do.
But rather importantly, but they end, they, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, they obtain the blood sample, and then that needs to be sent away to someone who knows what to do with the blood sample. Yeah, of course. Right? Well, so what, what happens to in the Ontario, person? that's the Canadian Society or Forensic Sciences Building. What happens to the person sitting at the, so that person's then released at some point, and then they wait for the result to come back, and how does that work? No, the person will also be subject to an examination by a drug recognition expert, and, and, and in Canadian law, on, on the basis of that examination alone, they can lay a charge of impaired. There's two sets of charges. Right. And then follow up here. when the blood test comes Peter, back. Is that it? There's two sets yeah. of charges. There's impaired by drug, which which is a separate criminal offense, pr primarily proved by observations of the driver, the standardized field sobriety testing, and the drug recognition ex drug recognition mm -hmm. expert. And then there are per se limit offenses where where a person is alleged to have greater concentrations of THC in the blood than is allowed in law. Those are two very separate charges with two different. In, in, in evidentiary gathering chains and two different types of prosecutions. And th th you can charge both or either. But rather importantly, now the police have, have that training and these devices. In Ontario, if, if they have a person with a graduated license or a commercial driver who they suspect is under the influence of drugs, even if they don't charge them criminally, they can suspend their license, administer a fine and tow the car and render that situation safe. That deters young people from well, let's finish driving. let's finish on this you talked about the device the Drager 5000 uh, it's the only device certified by your government it measures the uh, THC amphetamine and cocaine levels in saliva bet the size of a toaster costs yep. about uh, uh, six grand per unit but some Canadian police force are saying they don't trust it they don't they don't want to buy it uh, to, to them the jury's out on it they don't think it's reliable two, it, that's two things problem, Peter that's it? the first device that we've approved there will be others there there are others in the marketplace there are others in use in other jurisdictions that's the first one that, that that has been approved based on the standards that were set for us mm -hmm. by the Canadian Society of Forensic Science Drugs and Driving Committee a group of toxicologists and scientists that was that was that their recommendations were accepted and adopted by the government we, we every any device before it's approved was put through rigorous testing and the Drager 5000 is the first one that was approved and available for the police. There will be others. Um, okay, but are you saying so? Uh, police forces that refuse to use it, saying they don't think it's reliable, are you, are you siding with them or no, saying no, 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 look, no, no, this, no, no, no? I, I want to assure them it is. Are, are you telling them to wait for there'll no, be others coming no, or say no, it, no, you need it, to use this? It's good. It is reliable, but you know the police services have a lot of other priorities, and they're looking at the best use of their resources um, and, and to, to answer all of those priorities. And so I don't argue with, quite frankly, with police chiefs if they say, okay, I'm going to use that device and many police services are, or I'm going to wait for another one, or that's not a priority for me, that's between that police chief and his boss, which is the police services board and the constituency serves. My job was to make sure that we made that technology available to them, and we have done that. They urged us to do that. In 2014, the chiefs, okay. Canadian chiefs passed a unanimous resolution asking for access to that this technology. And the only way to do that is to set the standards through the, the Drugs and Driving Committee and, and, and to have the Attorney General approve the devices. They urged us to do it. We've done it. The device is there. The choice is there whether to use it. And I'm confident that they'll be, once they become comfortable, there are earlier and late right. adopters of new technology. The early adopters will go out there and I think d demonstrate its worth. I have great confidence in that technology. It's exactly what the police chiefs asked for. And, and they'll, they'll adopt it when they're ready. All right. Bill Blair, thank you. Thank you.